What an amazing anointing this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence. Thank you that we don't have to come with empty religion. We don't have to try. We don't have to act. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to be anything that besides just in love with you. And we just declare this morning that we are in love with you. We thank you that it's not us who loves you, but that you loved us first. And we thank you for that love. I thank you for that love. Amen. Amen. Everybody good this morning? Thank you. Thank you. It's like 25 to, um, to 10. I was thinking, yes, now, what are we going to do now? It's like, you know, we're almost finished with the worship. And there's like, at least, I mean, we normally worship till 10 o'clock. Amen. And then God just comes. And he just takes us in that, in that river. Who was in the river this morning? Amen. Yeah, so... So guys, even if you didn't feel that you were in the river, by faith, just come and, and be obedient, as I said just now. And uh, God is going to put you in that river. It's that river of grace we learned about last week on the, on the wedding. Wedding. Maybe it should be a wedding. On our marriage course. So this morning I want to talk to you about the snare. Beware the snare. Everybody ever been caught in a trap? many times. So I want to talk to you, and I, and, I, and I believe that this word is for every single, say to the person next to you, this word is for you this morning. This word's for you, and say to the person, God's going to heal you this morning. If he, if he hasn't already. <laughs> you know, he always, what God does is he, um, he defeats the enemy, and then, he, and, then, and then he brings us in, and then we like, make as if we're doing something, and God's already done the job. Amen? Yeah, that's what he does. He makes us look good. Yeah, so we can have faith. But he's already defeated our enemy 2,000 years ago at the cross of Calvary. Amen. So I want to talk to you about the snare. And the snare that I want to talk to you about is, is I think it's a very uh, um, specific word. And I think it's a very timely word for now. And funnily enough, the, the scripture that I used comes out of um, Matthew 24, which is actually... Uh, uh, what would we call it, an end time scripture, eschatological scripture, a scripture about what's going to happen in the last days. And so, I mean, I think I, I, think I preached a message in 2019 on offense. And, you know, isn't it, isn't it incredible when you look back and you go and check your notes, you think, shame, the of Vietnam. So in, the, in a few years' time, I'm also going to say, oh, shame, you know, the, the river. But it's, it's that God just gives you one revelation at a time. He takes you slowly and gently because we can't handle too much. Amen. Okay. So, the snare that, that um, you know, if we, we, we know we all love the scripture, Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save my God. He's my rock. Amen. He's my fortress. Amen. He's my God. Amen. In whom I trust. Surely, he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the terrible pestilence. So, so we all know that scripture, but do we understand what it means when God, when God says to us, beware, beware. So I'm going to read to you from, for those of you who've got your Bibles here. So we're, we're reading out of uh, Matthew 24, verse 9 to 14. And uh, the disciples are, are with Jesus and they, they want to know what's going to happen because they, they're afraid. They're very afraid. And Jesus goes and um, he sits on the Mount of Olives and he's actually looking at the temple. And before, before these few verses, he actually talks about that there will not be one stone above another. In other words, that grand, I don't know if any of you know how that temple looked when it was, when it was in its prime. It was something to behold. It actually... Because of the marble that they used um, where there wasn't gold, they used marble and it used to shine. It was this shining, beautiful thing. So you can just imagine Jesus sitting, for those of you who have been there, the, the Mount of Olives is, is like on a hill right next to, overlooking that, that part of Jerusalem where, you know, um, where the temple is. And he's talking to them. And, and you can obviously sense that they're afraid. 
And so Jesus, they asked him, so how will we know when you're coming back, Lord? How will, you know, how will we know? And I'm, I'm just going to go from verse 9, because obviously, um, and I'm not, I'm not quoting anything out of context. Okay. He says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, I, I, I think that's for the Jewish people. But remember, he's talking to them about what, how do we know it's the end? How do we know the end is coming? How do we know that we can really expect you to come? But the next verse, he says, and then many will be offended. Say to the person next to you, many will be offended. Will betray one another and will hate one another. Then, see, it's, 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 there's a sequence here. Many will be offended, will betray one another, will hate one another, and then false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. So for me, that's a sequence of events. But he who endures to the end, say to the person next to you, I will endure to the end. And then he makes a beautiful statement. He said, and this gospel, this gospel of the kingdom, will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, then, then the end will come. Okay, guys. So I didn't read, the, I didn't read the, the, the few verses before that, and maybe I should just read it, because remember, we know in that part where it says there will be wars, rumors of wars, nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there will be famines, pestilences, and quakes. And this is the beginning of sorrows. So, so, it's not the end, it's the beginning of what's taking place. And then he gives that part that I've just read to you now, and he says that the gospel of the kingdom will be preached, and then the end will come. So, this is not an eschatological or an ain't date words copy. This is a pastoral message for you guys who don't know. Um, I'm, not, I'm not warning you this morning. I'm, I'm a family member saying to you guys, we've got to help each other. And we've got to ask God to help us. Because if he doesn't help us, we're not going to make it. We need each other. We need each other through the power of God. So I'm just going to focus on those few verses. It says, and then many will be offended. Who of you have never been offended? <laughs> Lord, how do I preach this message? The snare of the enemy is offense. And even worse, what, I've, what, I've, what the Lord's laid in my heart is not even offense, it's second offense. Second offense. Who of you have taken second offense? Anybody here is married has taken second offense? Anybody here that's uh, not married? So what is second offense? Second, is, second offense is when somebody tells you what somebody else did to them and you get an emotion inside of you and the next time you see that person, the cobra's up. You remember the cobra? We spoke about anger. We spoke about anger. So all of a sudden, and for the next six months, but it's me, it's not you guys. The next six months, every time you see that person, it's like, mm, I feel something here. Yeah. And they've done nothing to you. But there's something in your heart that's like, yeah, where did this come from? And guys, we've all, all of us, there's, no, there's nobody sitting here that, that hasn't had taken second offense. There's nobody sitting here that hasn't been offended by somebody in church. And this scripture is not for the unsaved. This scripture is for the children of God. This, this scripture is for us. This scripture is Jesus telling us, listen guys, when you see people get offended, when you see people taking second offense, when you see people leaving churches, when you see people, you know, not coming to, not coming to sell anymore. And I mean, they've always, there's always an excuse, isn't it? There's always, no, you know, I'm very busy and, you know, things are just getting out of hand. And, um, and guys, a lot of times, a lot of times you'll actually have good reason to be offended. Because, I mean, listen, I mean, if I just take the men themselves, we're insensitive. It's just me. We are insensitive. 
we say things. I mean, I'm even insensitive here at cell as well. You know, my wife gave me a reprimand about two months ago and she said, I'm going to stop talking about women. So I said, okay, sorry. So we are, we're insensitive. So people get offended. And what happens with that offense is, you see the problem, the problem is that that word offense is, is, is the word scandal on it. I don't know if you know, it's the word that we use for scandal. And the problem is it's actually, the, 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 the root word means that, have, have you ever seen a bird trap? little bird trap that's got a little trigger and the, and the bird goes in and there's a little stick now that word is that little stick when he just when that bird just touches that stick you know there are two things either something falls on or, or if it's a if it's a bent root of a tree then it'll catch him the, the problem here guys is this we don't know when we're offended we don't know when we snared because you know what we do you know what does pride do when you're offended Hide it away. So now, yeah, <clears throat> it's okay. <clears throat> I'll be okay. <sighs> you know, I'll. I don't greet the person the same way, and I. <clears throat> I don't tell them. I don't give them. Uh, apparently, my, my brothers in Christ tell me that I've got a hug. That when I hug them in a certain way, then they know there's something wrong. So I don't know how they got that right. But now I just hug them twice as hard, no matter. So if I'm offended, then I hug them even harder. So if you get a hard argument, you must worry, eh? <laughs> is, this, is this genuine or, or what's going on? I'm only joking. So, so the problem is that once, once, we get, once we get offended, it's not external. Have you ever thought of that? So now you get offended. And if we read that scripture, there's a, there's a... What happens when you get offended? We all know. And I mean, this is not... The, Jesus wasn't giving us this new great revelation. We will betray one another. And betrayal takes many forms, guys. It takes many forms. Why do we betray? We betray because there was an expectation. And um, when I get offended immediately, I think that it's what you did to me. And so what happens is that I start, I start to bring up these walls around my heart. I do. I bring these walls up. But I'm still okay with God. So I bring these walls up. And I move away from the person that, I, that I'm in a relationship with. Maybe it's a brother. Maybe it's a... You know, it's terrible if it's me because I used to have to listen to my voice at least two weeks of the month. So I want to say to all of you, I forgive me. If I've ever offended you, and I'm not being funny now. If I've said something that hurt you, if I said something that made you feel less of a child of God, if I, if I said something, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Because I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm up here and I've got to say things that God gives me to say and I don't always get it right. Okay? So, so I'm just saying, so, so the, when you've got an offense towards a pastor, that's a problem, isn't it? I mean, it's a big problem because you've got to listen to his voice. <laughs> <laughs> Although us men can get, you know, we can, we're pretty good at that. We spoke about it last week at, uh, the, you know, we go to the nothing box. So we can look at our wives, I mean, and they can talk for an hour and we just give the right nod and, and say, yeah, Aguario, Aguario te say. But there's nothing going on here because we know nothing box. So forgive me. No, I'm sorry. That's, when, you, when you apologize, when you want somebody to forgive you, don't ask them to forgive you. You say to them you're sorry. You must open the door. You must give them the choice of whether or not they, because they might not be at the right place emotionally, spiritually to, to forgive you. There's stuff that they've got to work through. So, so it's very difficult. And I mean, we've all been through these things, guys. And, you, and we're going to go through it a lot of times. We're still going to go through a lot. You will never, ever you will never ever get to the place where the potential that, that you will not be offended will be gone. I'm sorry, we don't get stronger. <laughs> I don't know about you, Pastor Quibbers, I'm getting weaker. I mean, I cry more than two years ago. I'm, not, I'm more dependent on you. I'm not more independent. God didn't save you so that you can become an independent, super spiritual guru. 
He saved you so that you could teach people how to love. He, you could teach people how to forgive. And you could teach people how to forgive 70 times 7 necessarily. And that you could be open about it. And that you could be honest about it. And that you can be um, vulnerable about the fact that you have an issue with that person. And that you've been offended. And so what happens if we... If we betray, betray means, guys, and I'm speaking to leaders now quickly, just for three seconds. That means all of you, because all of you are leaders. Amen? You can say to the person next to you, the pastor said, I'm a leader. You are. If you're born again, you lead. I'm not saying you're a soul shepherd. I'm not saying you're a pastor. I'm saying if you're born again, you're a leader. Because you have to lead your home spiritually. You have to lead at work spiritually. You've got to take the first step. When you meet somebody that's not saved, you've got to take the lead spiritually. That's what God's called you for. He's called you to preach the gospel in season, out of season. So when we betray one another, you see the first test of leadership is, is, is loyalty. Not Thank you, Pastor. Who's been tested in their loyalty? It's the first test. And I'm, and I'm quoting scripture. Why? Because if I fail the test of loyalty, I'm going to betray. I'm going to move away. I'm going to say, listen, I'm going to move on down the line. I'm, I, I can't come to this church anymore because, um, you know, it's, it's just, I don't, like what, I don't like what the pastor says, or I don't like the theology, or I don't like the... Um, you know, I don't like the ashes. I'm Louis. I, I, he wasn't even listening now. It's okay. He's focused there. So we betray. We betray and we think it's okay. I want to tell you something. It's not okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a messenger from God. Evangelion. I'm a messenger from God today to tell you it's not okay to go away. I'm here this morning to tell you that when you are married... When you are offended, you are not allowed to betray your wife or your husband. You are not allowed to go away. You've got to stick it through. You've got to stay in the game. And you've got to push through the pain barrier. And you've got to allow the Spirit of God to transform you into the image of Jesus Christ. Because that's why He gave you a wife. And that's why He gave you a husband. And He's taking you through these things. You see, when you're here on a Sunday morning, it feels good. When we're here on a Sunday morning, we feel holy. But when we get back to the, to the grind of life, then things start to happen. You see, you're not going to know how much, how much unforgiveness and how much offense you have until the pressure comes. It's the pressure. And it's that pressure. It's that grind that brings all that stuff out. How many of you have been in a situation in the last week or two weeks where you acted totally out of character? You can't understand how horrible you were. And you know why? Pressure. Pressure. And pressure brings out that offense. Pressure brings out that want to betray. I want I will not care to honey man. I'm just listen, if that if that I guess to look at me one more time, I'm gonna collapse. I'm just gonna I can't handle it. And God all the time is smiling and he says, Man, I'm just getting started with you. Say to the person here, God's just getting started with you. And then we'll hate one another. You know, the people, the people that can hurt you most are the people that are the closest. I love you guys, and they're guys that I know better than I know other people. They're people that are in close relationships with me. But there's only one person in this place that can really, 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 really hurt me. It's that woman sitting there, because she's got my underbelly. You see, when, when two people are close, the closer we are, the more susceptible we are to offense. And, the, and, 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 and the, the more intimate the relationship, the bigger the fall from grace, the bigger the pain, the bigger the, the dare I say it, the disappointment. And, and, and I just believe, Melissa, you know, God used you this morning because what he did to you, he's doing to everybody. He just, he's very good at that. He wants to do it first and then, he'll, then we can re read the theology. It's not, theology is not important. God is. And God has healed you this morning. And I'm looking forward to your testimony. And don't feel that as a pressure. Listen, 
When somebody says to you, you well, you've got to go and test it. And that's what God is doing. Each one of you with a fence this morning. You see what we do. Watch what happens. I'm going to read this, this part out of 2 Timothy quickly for you. And uh, let me just get it up for us. Actually, the last, it's, it's actually the last bit um, that, that I want to, to say to you. Again, I say don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments. Muni Baklaini. Muni, say to that next to you. Muni Baklaini. Don't fight. Don't get involved in foolish, ignorant arguments. Why? They start fights. Who have you innocently gotten in the car? <laughs> we were on marriage course last weekend. You just say two words. <laughs> and there's an explosion. I mean, Ivan's here this morning. He'll tell you that many times when he was a little kid, you know, we'd have this awesome service, get into the car, like two minutes later, it's World War Three. Where did that come from? They only start fights. A servant, that's you and me, guys. That's us. We, servants of the Lord, must not quarrel. Help me, Lord Jesus. I did not know that for, I think, 16 years of my saved life because I quarreled. Akit Baklay. I thought I was doing God a favor. And all I was doing was getting more and more and more and more deluded, more and more offended. And guess what eventually happened to me? I got deceived. I got deceived. So the servant of the Lord, this is not a, this is not a pastor, this is, not a, this is you. You must not quarrel. I'm not going to fight anymore. I'm going to be kind to everyone. And I'm going to teach everyone. I'm going to be patient with difficult people. And I'm going to gently instruct those who oppose the truth. In other words, those who are misled, those who are deceived. Perhaps God, and, and the, other, the other Bible, this is the New Living Translation, perhaps God will change. In other words, perhaps God will grant them repentance to change those people's hearts so that they will learn the truth. So you, guys, if, if God doesn't come in this situation and do something to you, I want to say you missed, you, 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 you're stuck. There's nothing you can do. You can, you, when somebody is, is, has, been held, is, has been offended and they are deceived, there's nothing you can do. You can talk to them. And it's like that nothing box. The light's on, but nobody's home. And here's this, the, the scripture I want. When you've told them that if, if God grants them repentance, they will come to their senses. It's like there's a veil. It's like they, they, they're on some sort of drug. Really, they are on some sort of drug. You will speak to them and they won't hear what you're saying. And they will justify their anger. And they will justify why they're doing it. And they will quote scripture to you, saying to you why they're justified in the way that they're acting. And if you're young in the Lord, like I was, you'll fight. <laughs> and I fought. And I tried to convince. Because I thought it was rebuke, exhort, you know that? But I wasn't doing that. I was fighting. Then they'll come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap. Same word, guys. Trap, snare. For they've been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. When you have fallen into that trap and you are offended, Satan will do anything and everything with you. He will destroy your spiritual life first. Then he will destroy your marriage. Then he will destroy your children. And if things get, if you allow things to get go completely, he will terminate your life prematurely. Why? And all the while, all the while, God is standing at the door and waiting for us to come so that he can help us. The stony ground offense. And, they, and, they, and these are they likewise who are sown on the stony ground. So when they've heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. So the guys get saved. They get born again. They come to church. And they just on fire for Jesus. Yo! And you say to them, listen, man. Hey, in six months' time, you're going to be cross with me. No, never, never. No, I love you so much. You're awesome. Just when we're brying again and when we're having this again. 
and, 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 and no, no, I can't get cross. I'm, I'm in love with Jesus and have no root in themselves and so endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction, say to the person, affliction, affliction or persecution arise for the word's sake, not the world, the word's sake, for Jesus' sake, immediately they are offended. Immediately they are offended. And we know what happens with that ground. That seed stops growing right there. That plant dies. The truth remains, only those who care about you can hurt you. You expect more from them. After all, you've given them more of yourself. The higher the expectation, the greater the fall. And what happens, guys? Remember that scripture I read to you just now? They will hate one another and many false prophets will rise up. Deception comes. Why will deception come? Because look what happened to me. You offended me and I put that wall around my heart. Guess who I've just pushed out? I've pushed, I've pushed God out. So now I don't hear his voice anymore. Now somebody comes and they give me all these beautiful teachings. And I think, yeah, now let me go here. Yeah, this, this, I need to hear yeah, this. This stuff sounds more. Remember we spoke about it a few weeks ago. So I swap relationship for ministry. I swap relationship for ministry because my heart's sore. But what happens with the word of God if there's no love in your hearts? The Bible says that you are puffed up because without, without love, Scripture becomes poison. It becomes the letter and it kills. And so I take that word and because there's no love, my, my, the, the love of God grows cold. It says there, many false prophets will rise up. So I'm going to listen to other voices. I'm going to listen to other pastors. I'm going to listen to other preachers. And they were going to deceive me. Why? Because my heart is offended and I've been deceived and I don't know. And guess what happens? My love grows cold and I start to backslide. I'm beseeching you this morning. I'm asking you this morning to do what God wants to do with each of you. Because there's a beautiful scripture and Pastor Quibus always preaches it so well and it's revelation and it's about the church of Lady Saints. I'm just going to I'm just going to do that. Let me just give you that scripture. So hate. The word hate is actually, if you look at the old pictogram or the original language, then um, the, the pictograms are judgment, crushing. Okay? Sheen. And then the next one is life. It's a picture of a fish. And the next one is, is um, Aleph, which is the picture of the father. So when we hate... When we hate, the pictogram of the old language says that we want to destroy the life that God has given us. So we judge and we crush life, but we actually want to crush God. And if you read that, I think that's such a beautiful definition. Hate is the most ideal sense in the most ideal sense is the desire to crush and destroy the life and the activity of our God Heavenly Father. Hatred is a double-barreled shotgun with each shell loaded with a thousand complaints aimed at the Creator. You don't just hate people. You can't just hate people. When you hate people you hate God one John says that um, he who says he hates his brother is a liar and the love of God is not in him so this morning I want to ask you where's your brokenness where's your brokenness you all know how much offense you have you all know how much that you're walking around with God is dealing with your heart this morning and he says to us Jesus talking to me and he's talking to you he says I counsel you he's not commanding you guys I'm counseling you to buy from me gold refined in the fire when you go through each affliction when you go through things when you go through trials and tribulation it's it's the it's the fire of affliction and the fire of affliction 
The only thing that can help you in the fire of affliction is the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because it's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that saves you. And when God saves you, He makes you into a new person. And when He makes you into a new person, He takes you through that affliction because you've put on, you've, you've dressed yourself with a white garment of His righteousness. And He's saying to all of us this morning, you need the blood of the Lamb. You need my blood. You don't have money to buy from me because you're deceived. You see, we think we have everything. We think that we, oh, oh, we've got, he says there that you, you, you think that you've got good clothes and you can buy all these things and you have no need. You are deceived. When you say that, you are deceived. But I counsel you this morning to buy from me gold that has been formed in the fire of affliction. You see, what happens when, when we fall into that affliction and it starts to, all those impurities start coming out. And, we, and, and all of the while, we're complaining. But the first thing that God says to do is, you need self your eyes. Because you don't know that you're deceived. You don't know that you're offended. You don't know. You're just not. Guys, listen to me. Many, many years ago, many, many years ago, my wife and I were, were on a marriage uh, encounter weekend together. And I had had a deep conversation with my spiritual father about, you know, something that my wife believed. And he obviously told his wife because that's what we do. We tell our wives everything. And um, my wife is very, very sharp. Say, say to the person, my wife is very sharp. All of your wives are very sharp. And my wife came to me and she said to me, did you tell your spiritual father what I said to you? And I said, I did. I want to tell you something to, to, I mean, to say that there was a, there was a, I mean, it was destruction that weekend. It was hell. What should have been this amazing weekend turned into, and I remember writing my spiritual father a WhatsApp and I said to, and I, and I mean, I just creamed him. I said to him, I will never, ever tell you anything. And we are over. We are done with. How can you? take what I gave you out of the depth of my heart and I mean it was a counseling session I wasn't this wasn't what's name and I mean I had I remember that weekend and I was I mean you can just think how angry and offended you are because you trust this person and there's some of you sitting here that, have, that, that I'm, I'm speaking to you I want to say to you that that I know today that that my spiritual father didn't tell his wife because he wanted to hurt me he didn't tell his wife because he was being unfaithful to, to the relationship with me. He told his wife because he was being a good husband. And she made a mistake. She made a mistake because she was in a good relationship with my wife. And she told him. And it, it's, you know what we call a Freudian slip? <laughs> it was a Freudian slip. But today, I can tell you today that that was one of the, probably the, you know when you start breaking down a, a house with a 10 pound hammer, those first shots, it doesn't look like anything's going on, eh? But that was the first of the shots of my hard heart and my wife's hard heart before we really started dealing with all our issues. And I want to say, th I'm, I'm so thankful for that happening. And guys, I want to encourage you this morning that if you've got pain, that if you've got offense, that if you've you must realize that, that there, is, there is deception and you don't even know it. And you need somebody. You need to speak to somebody that you can trust. And I want to say to you, even, I've always said this, even if you take what I say to you and you go and tell the whole world about it, and it makes me look like a total doofus, praise God. Because if there's any pride in here, guess what's going to happen? God is going to deal with my pride. And that's what makes this. This guy, guys, you, if you stay in the game, if you stay in relationship, if you allow God to penetrate your hard heart, if you allow people in there, I promise you, God is going to transform you. He's going to give you victory. And He's going to make you a leader among leaders. Just because you allowed Him. Don't accept the status quo. Don't accept 
the pain level. Don't accept where you are right now. I want to ask you this morning, allow people and allow God to come and to remove. Because in the last days, we're going to betray each other if we haven't sorted out that stuff. He says, repent. Repent means to say, to say to God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I allowed this to come into my heart. And so Skulk's going to take our covenant meal this morning. I don't have any clue what he's got planned for us. And, um, but I believe that, Skulk, you can come in now and, and, and take covenant meal with us. There was a temptation for me to do an altar call this morning for, for those of you who are, that are sitting with, with that big thorn in your heart. But I think God wants to do it a bit differently this morning. And I think the covenant meal is, is, is our answer. Amen. Amen.